Sound design. So, can you use average phase to complete your main subalignments? I think the answer is yes, but it doesn't work every time, and that's what I'm going to talk about in today's video. So, what is average phase? Well, if you take a look at your audio analyzer, let's just take a look at some measurements here. What are these measuring? These are measuring a sub, and here's the room I was in. So tiny little example, tiny little audience. Um, so we've got a sub down here, a main up here, and four microphone positions going back like this. And um, I'm going to zoom into the low end here. And I'm going to rotate this around a little bit with the arrow keys. And I'm going to remove any trace offsets. There we go. OK, so this should start to make sense. Um, this green guy, letter A, is louder because it's closer. And then you can see as we move down A, B, C, D in the phase here that the phase traces start to bend down farther. So what happens is that you can select all of these and create an average, make sure it's coherence weighted, and then you'll get something like this. And this can be super helpful in the field, especially if you have a live average, because then you can make changes and immediately see that live average again. Because when you look at these and you're trying to do your alignments, you might think, oh, which of these should I use? Which position should I use? Well, you can use your audio analyzer to help you decide what is the average uh, phase between all four of those positions. And we can look at that and um, use that in our decision-making process. Uh, interesting that the average is almost exactly like this blue position, this B position, which is this guy right here, which is um, almost at half, a little bit before, you know, 50% depth of this audience plane. So super helpful, and if you haven't used it yet, you definitely should. It's great in the field. Um, I made a mistake here, and if you've used averages in your audio analyzer already, then you may have noticed what I did wrong. Um, actually, I'm not sure if all an audio analyzers work the same, but in SMART, it's really important to know that trace offsets do not influence the average. So what do I mean by that? If I were to take this green guy and move him uh, really far up here, and then I were to make a new average, average, let's make it pink, and put it there. Well, wow, it's still way down here. So obviously the offsets that I put in don't have an effect. So the mistake that I made is that I should have put this green guy down here with my microphone preamp before I created the average so that it wouldn't be pulling the uh, black average trace up um, artificially high. So the average should have ended up probably around here. So in this case, a very small difference. Um, but when you are doing bigger uh, audiences with uh, bigger distances and changes, then you want to make sure you match your microphone preamps before you create the average. If that's the result that you want, usually it is for me. Okay, so that's averages. In a situation like this, it often works great, especially if you have, you know, kind of a noisy environment or you're getting some reflections. You know, uh, I think one thing I forgot to point out is that if you look at this purple guy, you see that it's got some coherence issues here. Uh, and if these are happening, you know, over an area where you're trying to do your crossover alignment, it might be confusing. But once you do that coherence weighted average, it's going to give less weighting in the average to the data with bad coherence um, and give you a more reliable result. Where has this not worked for me is in situations where there are um, very large differences in arrival times. So I know this one's kind of messy and it's hard to look at, um, but I'm going to try and direct your attention to some smaller areas. And maybe we'll just do one at a time real quick here. So um, here's A and here's B. And if we look at um, maybe just at around 100 hertz, they look pretty similar. And we think like, oh, OK, an average. That'll help us out. And we put that average on top of there. And yeah, that's cool. It's like in this area. OK, now let's take a look at A and C. 
Um, it's not super far away. Um, so uh, hopefully an average will help us out. Like this is working well, right? So that's what I was thinking at first. <laughs> I forgot to point out that there's really low coherence in this area that we need though. So, so slightly less reliable. Um, I really struggled with this alignment though. And it wasn't until I got home and looked at the system design that I realized why. So here's the system. Here's this room. So as you can see, I have these main speakers spaced wide. So that's my first problem. My second problem is center sub. And my third problem is the way I place the microphone. So I could not probably have created a bigger challenge here. At each one of these microphone positions, A, B, and C, there is a big change in arrival time. So if you use your delay locator and you set the delay, uh, the internal compensation delay for your audio analyzer at microphone positions A, B, and C, and then you measure the subs solo, then if you compare A and B positions, then just based on the difference in distance, we should see a change of 324 degrees at 100 hertz. So going back to look at this measurement, if we just look at A and B again, we don't see that. We see that they're the same. Um, but 324 is almost one wraparound. We should really see this guy a little bit up here, right? About 40 degrees away. Um, and I think it's because of this problem in coherence. You know, there's some reflection or something that's pushing it down and it's kind of not reliable. Okay, so it's harder to see that one. But this one, now if we compare A and C, we should see almost two wraparounds, 643 degrees. So if we remove the wraparounds, then we should be left with a difference of 70 degrees at 100 hertz. So let's look at A and C. So at 100 hertz, at A and C, 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees. So not too far off from the estimate that I'm that I was expecting of about 70 degrees. Um, so all of this to say that really what we're looking at here is not great for an average because we have multiple wraparounds and the, the average doesn't know that the average is, <laughs> the average is I could say that the average is misleading us but really the audio analyzer is doing exactly what I asked it to do and is trying to average these three together when really there's uh, multiple wraparounds here that it's trying to uh, make visible to us. And I just realized as I was putting, uh, preparing for this video that it might have helped also in the field to look at unwrapped phase. So if I go to my options here and say, let's look at unwrapped phase from about 90 to, I think the maximum you can go to here is negative 999. Let's see if we can go to 999. Nine, no, okay. And let's go to one and change this to phase. Okay, and then I'll zoom into the low end. Uh, okay, now it becomes a little bit more apparent. Let's take a look at 100 hertz again. Use the arrow keys to get down here. Here we go. Now we're seeing the wraparounds. Uh, this guy's way up here. This guy's way down here. This guy's super far away down here. Um, and now if we put the average on top of that, the average is over here. Like now this starts to make sense. Like how can we possibly have an av you know, have a useful average uh, between these guys that's so far apart. So it's this kind of situation where I think this is not going to work out for you. Um, if I were to do this again and I still wanted to use a multi-mic average, then uh, I would have pushed all the mics together so there wouldn't be such a huge difference. Now, of course, this is the truth, right? This is what's happening across this audience for these people. But if I want actionable data and I want to at least create an alignment at one point, uh, then I'm going to need to, you know, pick one of these. I, I can't have all three. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I probably would have, you know, used like a position back here and just put all three together, maybe at slightly different heights or something like that, but not such quite a huge difference here. So I want to know if you've tried measuring average phase to complete your crossover alignments in the field. Let me know your results by commenting below this video. Thanks. Sound design. Live.